on um, pre-9-11, but this is my disaster poem. I think it would be a very different poem. Than the, um, this is pre-kids, <laughs> pre-9-11. Uh, sky falling, <clears throat> pre. <laughs> <clears throat> when he's late, you don't assume he stopped for milk or is stuck behind a train. Instead, you picture metal against metal, slick streets and overturned cars, sirens, the voice of the woman from the hospital when she calls to tell you the news. You think about the sound you would make, first silence, then an opening like blinding light collapsing into a slide of scree. Which friend would you call first? How would you get to the ER? And afterwards, would you give up your life and move away from everything? You think of how the sun breaks on the window of the church behind your house, tumbles down the walls into the street. Conjure the scent of cigars and rain as he curls around you from the cold side of the bed. Wonder why you yell at the dog when what you mean to do is change the way you live. So you're drawn to the disasters in the news, the shipwrecks, plane crashes, bombings, the story of the ladies of Lockerbie collecting the clothes of the dead, torn, bloodstained, how they washed them as best they could, folding and pressing each shirt, each dress, and returning them to the families like sleeping ghosts. When you can't sleep, you invent what could happen. You imagine the pain. You can't place it. It isn't yours. But you hold it in your hands like a stone, roll it over and over, feel the weight. You can't imagine putting it down. Your shoulders tighten like clouds for a storm, the deep blue sky moving in. But then he pulls into the drive. The dog rakes and stirs. You hear the key in the lock. And you're done imagining the woman without a husband, the husband spinning into this tree, that guardrail, the ambulance, the helicopters, the world of potential falling. You're done. Mm.